What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining us for Core Conversations on a Thursday. It is a freestyle Thursday. So, shout out to Two Times You for always hooking up with gear. I guess I'll put both headphones in since it's just me. It'll take away some of that background noise. And we're going to have some fun with it today. I want to talk about healing through movement and what that actually means. So, uh, what's going on, Phil? We'll have... Um, we're going to get this going in a minute. What does healing through movement really mean? Hey, Danny, I haven't seen. So we'll talk about that in a second. So Danny, where are you located? And what do you do? Are you a Pilates person? Are you like movement, yoga? From Miami, nice. Like Tracy. I'm gonna send a few notes to a few people here. Core conversations today. Bam. All right. Sweet. Um, nice. You teach plies. Do you have a studio there? What do you do? And if you'd like to join me on air and chat, we are more than welcome to do it. This is the beauty of today. This is a freestyle Thursday. So. For those of you who have never um, been me, uh, joined me as a, for a conversation, now's a chance where you don't have to commit to an hour and worry about like what we're going to say and how we're going to fill the hour. We could just like talk on a certain topic or just uh, use this time to just say like, what do you do? Where are you located? How have you made your pivots during COVID? And um, yeah, what's your um, how you found Pilates or whatever it is that you do. It's almost like those, um, I used to do those speaker slam events back in the day and then in the intermissions they do like these two minute talks where someone who didn't feel comfortable enough to do a full speech in a competition can come up and talk for like a few minutes on a specific topic um, that's more passionate to them so it's not like they're, they have to dance around, they could really talk about something that they know a lot about for like a minute. Um, so yeah, so our freestyles are like that where you can just come on and we just talk about whatever you like. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to join me on air, I'd love to just chat and get to know you guys a little bit more, and then we'll get into our topic for today's people starting to flow on. <laughs> Danny, is that a no, I'm shy? Or are you like an East, oh, you're not East Coast. I'm not West Coast, I should say. It's funny when we have West Coast people on, and they're like, yeah, they're making all these comments. I say, do you want to show up? And they're like, ah, I'm still in my pajamas. It's 7 a.m. here. Um, so I get it. All right, let's do it. Hey. Hi. 
I Good am morning. in my pajamas, but I'm waiting <laughs> on the plumber. So, but he hasn't arrived yet. There you go. That's real life, right? Exactly. I already taught a um, an online class this morning with my golden girls or my super seniors, as I heard you say the other day. Yes. Yeah. So I like I like that. Yeah, I have a group of of girls, and after the pandemic, uh, we went online, or mm -hmm. since the pandemic, or whatever. Nice. So mm -hmm. um, I, I hear accent. Where are you from? So I'm originally from Jamaica. I grew up in okay. Jamaica. Nice. Yes, yeah, so I'm here in Miami like eight years now, so it's nice. It's an easy transition. Absolutely. Um, I have two, uh, there's two studios in Jamaica that I've been working on having on the show forever and it still hasn't worked. So Cor Corfit JA. Yeah. And Selena. yeah, Selena. And the other one was with two ladies. Is it move? Move Jamaica. Move. I forget what they're called. Yeah. But that's, um, mm -hmm. I know those two, two girls as well. I nice. forget the names now because I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> What's I to be agree. nervous about? We're just yes, uh, no problem. It's just uh, live. Yeah, I know. Right? It's just like it's not like there's there's six people watching us right now. So <laughs> I think we could just. Um, I think it's, would it be Lisa? I can't remember the names. I gotta look them up again. But um, yeah. yeah. Did you did you train? Like, did you have a? Did you do any plies in Jamaica before? No, I had always gone, like I went to Canada first, like long ago to start Pilates because I have family in Canada. And okay. you're in Canada too, right? Yeah, Mississauga, yeah. Yeah. So I went to Toronto and um, I did the start training, mat training at the very, very beginning. And nice. then I, I had like a lady come, a girl was teaching in Jamaica, like the one person long ago teaching in Jamaica and she had red equipment. Everything was red, the Cadillac, so cool. the, the ladder barrel. And I was like, what is this sorcery? And she was going away for the <laughs> summer and she asked me to, she like gave me two or three classes and then she was like, mm -hmm. you're ready. And she gave me all of her clients for the summer and that's wow. how I started. And Were then, you ready? Huh? I Were guess. You ready? Yeah, I fake it till you make it, man. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. And then I and then I wanted to do more. I wanted to learn more, and I needed to maybe get away from Jamaica. I've been there all my life, pretty much. So I came to Miami, which was an easy transition. Mm -hmm. And then I trained at Polestar. Oh, cool! Yeah, with Brent Anderson, you know, because Brent was still there. So that I was really fortunate to to have known brands and taken classes with him and then learn from very, very good mentors and instructors and stuff. Yeah. And then since then, um, I, I trained at, at Pilathon, another beautiful studio in Miami owned by oh, cool. the founders, Emily Bench. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it was, it's very been cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, would you say that you have any mentors right now or those are just people who kind of helped you up as you were kind of getting into the system at that point? She's still my mentor, Emily Ben. She will forever be my shining star. Oh, she teaches nice. me, yeah, every day. And I'll, you know, my friend, there's another girl named Andrea. She's from Uruguay. She was a, she was a mentor at Polestar. And since then she, uh, is not with Polestar, but she still works at other studios and stuff. She's great too. I always work with her. Yeah. Nice. That's very cool, right? So now do you work at a studio? Do you own a studio? Like what's your gear? Yeah, I work at I work at two studios at Pilates One, mm -hmm. which is awesome, and Pilathon, which is also okay, awesome. cool. The two best in Miami, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Except for Tracy's like home studio, right? <laughs> well, you know, exactly. And I and Tracy has been to Polestar a couple of times. I did a few workshops with her. She's great. She's so funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what's happening with Pilates in Jamaica at this point? Like, I mean, I know you're not there right now, but like I, I've had JB from Trinidad and I learned a lot about just the landscape there. Do you know much about the landscape of Pilates in Jamaica right now? Yeah. And if it's growing and... It's definitely growing because when I started 12 or 15 years ago, as I said, there was like one Pilates teacher. Mm -hmm. 
maybe two and then one was Matt. One. So for sure, it's grown a lot. And there's also one uh, called Body Forte. And that is a beautiful studio too, owned by this girl who was a, a Canadian girl, maybe I think. And she uh, was a physical therapist first and then transitioned. Okay. Well, you know, still does physical therapy and Pilates together. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Right. And yeah, so there's like three studios, like two in Kingston and one in Montego Bay. That okay. move to Jamaica is in Montego Bay. Right. My my family's from Jamaica, so I have like, those are my roots, right? Oh, so, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so I, every now and then I'm like, oh, I'd love to open something there and I have family all over the place and families in Kingston and, you know, in the country and all these different places. So um, I, that's been one of my takeaways from some of the conversations more recently is that, you know, there's people who are doing it well in obscure spots, right? And they've figured out their niche and they figured out their market. And, and like, um, like Kara yesterday, her town has 40,000 people in Western Canada. Uh, right. Eastern kid, right? So, so with that, is this like it's not like I can say I'm just going to train professional athletes. You're taking whoever walks in the door, exactly. so you become good, much like the plies work itself. It's for everybody. So now you're you're training everybody, and you make it work. So, uh, yeah, I think about Jamaica all the time. I'd love to have an excuse to be in Jamaica. Yeah, more. I'm sure you can go and be a guest instructor, or you can go open your own thing. There's there's room to for it to grow for sure. Right, exactly. I'm Especially sure as a guy in this world too, right? Yeah, they would love to have you. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's not too many dudes doing this, so <laughs> Joel yeah. and I can do a, a, do a tour. For sure. Nice. Well, jump, thanks for jumping on. I, yeah, just, no, I really appreciate you. you. That takes courage, so kudos to you. I know. No, can I, no. do you, oh, fresh, you can, hashtag fresh face. <laughs> thank you. I prefer a fresh face than a painted face. Right. Um, can I ask you one more question before we go? Do you got a second? Okay, so the, the topic I want to talk about today is healing through movement. Yeah. What does that phrase mean to you? Because I'm going to unpack it like in a really big way, but like just a sense of healing through movement. What does that mean to you and, and for you and your clients? Yeah, I was thinking about it a little bit. And healing not only like if you have an injury, but healing from the inside out because movement is so good for your mind and your body that that's mm -hmm. what it means to me like healing my mental as well as physical spaces you know yes yes exactly that's yeah, actually Joseph inside Kilatis. out is yeah. like the line i have right on top of my page so Ooh. go on because so, joseph kilati <laughs> said he, uh, healing through movement and movement heals or something like that right he said yeah something. yes yeah yes nice all right thank you so much for your time i really thank really you. appreciate it yeah thank, thank you too i watch it all the time so i'm like oh i'll join today get it nice okay can you hit the x button or else i'll lose the whole yes. show so <laughs> okay for sure bye thanks yeah leave there um yeah she's awesome thank you she'll Sheely b um i guess you're one of her students possibly um and yes raymond i should ask to him ask him about that maybe uh we'll get that going so many side projects i heard this line this morning and i have it written down somewhere because it just jumped off the page of me One moment, please, camera, motion. Your adversaries will never stop you from starting something. We can sit here and talk about starting stuff all day and no one's gonna start, stop us from starting something, starting a new business, starting a project, starting something. We're dangerous when we finish it. So they'll let us start 19 things as long as we never finish anything. So. That's why I love lines like finish strong Friday or got to be a finisher or finish strong. Everything's about finishing for me because it is so easy to start something. So how do we become better at finishing things? So yes, like Raymond, like Raymond is our cousin, Ferber, if you see that there, that's my brother just saying to do that. That'd be great to start one more thing. How many of us have started a ton of things and never finished anything really? 
So that's my thoughts on that. I remember that saying. So that was going to be my finished draw on Friday for tomorrow. And that's just, it just came out now because I've been musing on that. So does anyone else want to come on air and share with me what they think healing through movement means to them and what that's meant in their experience with their clients? By a show of hands, or I can have fun here and simply press request to join. Ali, good to have you. Looking forward to our chat. If you want to do a preview for everyone and join me right now and just talk about what the phrase healing through movement means to you in our Pilates space. I have a bit of a play on words this morning with it. Pilates Space Studios, hello. Here's my thoughts. Movement heals physically and psychologically. Yes, yes, absolutely. From the inside out, like Danny was saying a minute ago. Hey there, Jackie. I saw Pilates Place, but the handle says Pilates Place too, so I wasn't sure who it was. Very cool. So, welcome. The, the phrase um, movement heals is so good um, because we see it through our clients. And I, I know for myself, the times that I was in my darkest spots, the times when I'm I'm in a bit of a funk, when I remember that I could just move, I find so much like clarity in that place of movement. Um, there's a yes, like you said, like Joel saying there, this flow that comes out of that. Where the benefit, the the top benefit I have to say for me is just simply being present. The fact that I can forget about what's going on or checking my phone or whatever, just for a moment in time and just be present in my body is one of the greatest benefits of, of movement for me. From that place, I come back with a bit of clarity. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, over the last four days, I shared this on Monday and I had to, on Tuesday, and I took it down just because I wasn't sure um, content wise if I was, you know, how it's going to impact, but I could share it now that we're in the clear. Last week, I had um, a negative, sorry, I had to fly somewhere. And because I was flying, I had to do a COVID test. That COVID test was one of those, those elective ones. So you have to pay for it. It's not just a standard one you do through, through, the, through, the, uh, through the province. And it came back positive. And I was insistent that it was a false positive because I had no symptoms and no exposure, all of those things. So uh, it was frustrating because I had to make a lot of pivots. And while I was waiting to do a retest, which was almost impossible to find, I had to isolate. So for four days, while I was trying to figure out exactly what I was going to do and waiting for an another test result, I had to treat it like I had COVID, lock myself off from the world, pull away from everything and, and, and all that stuff. Um, so I got my test retest done on Monday and it turned out that I was actually negative. So I didn't have COVID. It was a false positive and all that stuff. So in the clear back to work, coming back to, um, connecting with people and all these different things, I feel like there's a sense of pulling away and then coming back in. There's a sense of being more present with people and recognizing what I'm offering to the world through this Pilates work and how, being present in this space is so healing and our own movement is healing. Um, over the, um, over the last few days, while I was at home doing nothing, I went on a lot of walks. I went in the forest. I did all these different things to just stay connected and not get so caught up in worry and second guessing and, and think about what's, what does this mean for everything and everywhere I've been and everyone that I'm in contact with. So that movement was healing for me. Get out and walk. Don't just sit home and watch movies. Don't just sit there and just lock yourself in a room and, 
and sulk and be mad at the world because you're forced to, to stay still, get out and move. So that's a whole side conversation when they tell you to isolate and they want you to stay in your house. I, I really challenge that. I'd much rather sit on a bench in a soccer field with nobody around me and breathe fresh air instead of breathing the recycled air in my house. I don't think a doctor would challenge me on that, but I think people don't move with the responsibility, so they have to lock us into one set of thinking instead of being really thinking about things critically. I'm on a tangent. Coming back to what I'm talking about here is movement heals, being present through movement heals. So that is one side of it. Um, thank you, Tracy, the very responsible set example. Like, you know, I just, it's not even setting example as much as I didn't want to um, be liable if anyone else <laughs> got, got it. So um, I'd much rather do that than, than have a lawsuit. Beyond four seasons. Yes. Here's the other point I'm making with this movement through heels. The word movement has two primary meanings and a double entendre is a word that has two meanings, two separate meanings, but you're using the same word in the same tense. Movement, action, fitness, activity is one thing. Movement, like a cause and a social action and those sort of things is the other way of saying it. Like the Black Panther movement or the so-and-so movement, the whatever, like an ideology or following something, there is healing through movement. When we're starting to talk more about representation and anti-Black racism and, dis and working against discrimination in our spaces, whether it's institutions like schooling, hospitals, policing, or in, you know, in our context, in our Pilates studios, is that representation? Is the trans community represented? Are the Black people represented? Is the Latino community represented? Are there a larger bodies, smaller bodies, visually impaired, all these different things? Do we make space for them? Is everybody welcome? Are they in leadership? All those different things. So we start to ask those questions. And this movement that's happening collectively and this awareness that's happened in the last year brings healing. There's healing through this movement. We are becoming more aware of what's happening around us. And I had a conversation yesterday. Um, I have some, uh, I'm on, sit on a board for an uh, organization here in Meadowvale, Mississauga. And it's a company, an uh, organization that I worked for many years ago. Like my first job out, like out of university was with the dam. And I sit on the board for the dam and we brought in uh, a specialist to come in and speak about anti-Black racism and systemic discrimination and how we can address these things. And it, it was a really great conversation because I feel like this organization is already doing great work. And I feel like from the days I was working there, I never felt a sense of being discriminated against. Uh, I felt very welcome. I had every opportunity to advance. I did advance all those different things. There was, there was diversity on the board. Everything was in balance, but there was nothing in our charter that said all people are welcome, all those different things. We lived it out, which I loved. So that begged the question about performative actions. Now, are we just ticking boxes by just putting, you know, black people are welcome, large bodies are welcome. This, uh, you know, the, the myriad of people groups are welcome. If we put that in, are we now just performative and ready out because we were already living it? Or do we need to put that in to appease people so this big, huge conversation happened, and that's, that's fine. The point I'm getting to is this. This movement that's happening collectively is bringing healing because people are now becoming more aware of it. If you are a white person, and in the last 18 months, you've now had to think about things that you haven't really thought about. If you're a Black person, you're living in an all-Black community, now you're thinking about different things. There's other people that haven't been part of the community, and why haven't they been welcomed in? Everyone has been interrupted because of what's been happening, this movement that's been happening. And there's a healing that comes as we, come, as we all become more aware of it. And the beauty of it, as we saw in our board meeting last two weeks ago, is even if we don't come up with solutions right away, 
if you have a heart to always be better and to be aware and to love people and all those things, you're going to walk into your workplace the next day with a different lens. You're going to go into your tax job or your, your, your retail job and look at things differently. You're going to look around and recognize that there may be more people that look like you than someone else. Or you're going to see an email come through and then check the board of directors for your organization, recognize that it's all white people. And you may start to ask different questions. That is all part of the healing that happens through this movement. We don't have to make radical changes, but we have to recognize that these changes happen from the inside out. And if you are interrupted in your thought patterns, if you're looking at things differently, if you think about the next round of interviews at your corporate job and you recognize that every resume is a Johnny and a Tanner and a Connor name, and there's no names of people that have other ethnic groups, which is totally visible by their name or their gender, then you're going to look at those things differently. There's a healing that comes through this movement. I'm loving that. And I want that to continue. I want us to be, continue to be cognizant of the fact that things are changing and embrace those changes and keep moving in that same direction. Keep subscribing to that. Keep investing in workshops. Even if you think that you really know enough, people like Sonia who are doing workshops on decolonizing the fitness industry or Misty who is doing one on We Are All Connected or uh, Daniel John is a great personal trainer and strength conditioning coach who I've had on a long time ago. And he has a different perspective even where a lot of black people will come onto social media and say like, don't expect me to do the work. Go Google, Google is free. And like, they'll use all these lines as to say like, I'm not going to answer it for you. He's saying, ask me, if you really want to know, ask me, I'll help you. I'll point you in the right direction. I'll show you what to say. I'll cheer you on and encourage you in your path to changing the mindset and the language of the people around you. So lots of people are doing great work in this way and we need to embrace them amplify those voices if you have a platform sign up for the workshops do all those things that encourage them and give them a spotlight in this time when you know a lot of people like a lot of us didn't have that spotlight two years ago like people are listening to me now that didn't know I existed two years ago because there's a, such a social consciousness there's a healing that's happening through this movement and voices that are actually affecting change and amplifying other voices are being heard now so this is a great time to subscribe to these things, to be part of these movements. This is a great time if you have been in this space for a while. I think, of, and Joel, not to pick on you, but Joel's a perfect example. He has someone like Alexa who is doing great work and works out of his studio, and he has a diverse group already. And there's things that are happening there if you are a person who kind of has a pulse in this already, this is a great time to be empathetic with those who are just figuring this out, who are just starting to feel that sense of guilt around it or just feeling like they need to do something. And they're, they're in this place where they don't want to be too performative, but then they don't want to say the wrong thing, but then they want to be in a place where they're doing the right thing, but then they don't want to look like they're a try hard, as my kids say. Help people to navigate this. Help people to navigate this space and this time that we're in because healing happens through movement. I'm just going to read some of your comments. Beyond Four Seasons, thank you. There are positive and negative movements. Some heal individually collectively and some do the opposite. Absolutely. So yeah, that's why I'm leaning into the positive right now, for sure. We have to do our part of the positive, healthy movements and movements. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hi, Blossom. For those of you who just joined, I opened with asking you, what is the term healing through movement? mean and i just went on a bit of a tirade about the different meaning of movements and how this movement collectively 
is helping us. Uh, and I want to circle back to the personal side of it because we're helping people to heal through movements. We're helping society to heal through our movements. But it still comes down to personally what's happening. And I can be performative within myself. And we all can sniff it out. Excuse me. When someone is doing something just to get a pat on the back. When someone is doing something just to say, look at me. When someone is doing something just so they can be seen as the one doing the right thing. So they could point their finger at, at other white people who haven't figured it out yet. Like they're the only ones who are woke or the black people who are calling out everyone left, right, and center when that's not, they're new to it. And I'm not knocking people who are truly activists who've been doing this for a long time when no one noticed them. That's a different story. Like I have so much respect for the people out there who have been in the game for 20 years. Like I, I'm not gonna pretend to be one of those people. But there's people out there that are just doing it for just to, to look like they're doing the right thing and like they're, they're good in it. And I want to wade through that to a place where we can really examine our own hearts. We can be honest with our approaches. We can be um, humble when we're wrong. Like I would love for someone to just bring th things to my attention so I can make a pivot. I, I'm quick to say, I'm sorry, that was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. What I meant was this. What I meant was this, and that was wrong too. Like whatever the case is, I've had people do that for me and I appreciate it. I'm actually in stronger relationships with the people who have called me out on stuff than the people who have chosen to unfollow me. That's a whole separate conversation, but I, can know, I know of two people individually, like specifically through this, these core conversations and then my other posts where they have basically said, I disagree with this. And then we've gone for days with back and forth and landed at something and we are good. They're the first people I ask to do things or I get their support on now and we work through it because they were brave enough to challenge me and then we both move forward as a result of it. So I'm not patting myself on the back for being a good person for not wanting to fist fight them in the alley. I'm just saying that because they're passionate about it and I was passionate enough about wanting to be right and not just, um, you know, I'm not right in terms of this, but like in terms of I wanted to, to do what was right and be correct. You know, there's times that, you know, I lose an argument. There's times that I have to change my stance on something. There's times where I, I stood my ground and, and we agree to disagree, but we're still good because it's not personal. It's a you know, thing that we're passionate about masculinity or um, all these different things. There's certain things I have a certain passion position on that we've had some dialogues with different people about. And, and it's all good. It's all good. So let's be in a place where we are all trying to respectfully get better every day. Nuanced, respectful conversation is a wonderful way to connect. Yes. One of the things I always say is that conflict should make a relationship richer. Conflict should make a relationship richer. So if I'm approaching you with something, you disagree about it, we can have a conversation and not feel like it is an attack on my character if you disagree with me. When a negative, when negative movements or when negative movements or stuck emotions come up, it can be an indication of deeper issues to consider and continue to peel back the layers. Healing is a journey. Yes, I agree. Uh, before Beyond Four Seasons, would you like to join me, Natasha? Do you want to join me on air? Let's talk about that. Hi, Kai. Hello, Claire. And Claire, too, if you'd like to join me. We're talking about movement through healing through movement. And this is this is kind of sparked out of my conversation with Carrie yesterday, too. So thumbs up to either of you who want to join me. All right. Okay. All good. I'll bring on Claire. That works out perfect. Hey Good there. Morning. How you doing? 
Good, I just walked in. But I always, I've been, I've been trying to tune into you as much as I can. So anyway, nice. I love this topic. So you're talking about change happens through movement and movement heals? Ultimately, yes, yes. See, well, what I think about that is, um, you know, the body's always learning, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just learning through the experience of what we're doing. And so if we're moving well, it's learning to move well. And if we're moving unwell, it's also reinforcing that movement pattern, right? So, yes. you know, so I think change happens through movement that it's not like a, it's not like a brain process per se. It's more of a, I, I, I always say like your body's learning when you, when you go to sleep because it's a neuromuscular patterning. Yes, that's happening. So it's not like I have to be analytical in order for my body to get smarter. You're right. And Absolutely. so, yeah. you know, so it's like becoming a smarter, better mover, not because you think it's so. Maybe we're concentrating when we're moving or something like that. But, you know, when we exaggerate that in our workouts, then when we go out into the world to do whatever we're going to do, we're just that much more efficient at it. Yes, there's a there's a book that I was reading on mindfulness and it had nothing to do with like fitness, or whatever, just sort of like a counseling book. And it challenged the notion that practice makes perfect. And it challenged the notion that practice that perfect practice makes perfect and all those different things. And the way that it said in this book was practice makes permanent. That's interesting. Yes, because what they're talking about is from the perspective of a neural pathway within our body. If I practice something 700 times, my body burns this neural pathway and it just knows that that's the way that it's supposed to be done. So whether it's right or not, that's what it knows comfortably to do unconsciously. Right. So if it's done right, it's a permanent neural pathway. If it's done wrong, it's a permanent neural pathway that we need to make a pivot and then change and then burn a new neural pathway. So practice makes permanent is the way that it was said. So I like what you're saying about the, that movement. It's not conscious but our body learns yeah it as we do yeah it. it's interesting that you're saying practice makes permanent my, my dad's a musician and um you know he said once that, that there's a famous composer that said repetition is a form of change mm. it's just like in dance it's like in anything it's like what you're talking about is burning those pathways um as people say say to me like, I, I come from the fitness world in my former life yes. um yes. and um people say, don't you get kind of sick of doing the same order all the time? I'm like, no, it's like this wild discovery. Like yes. I can do a push up, but then I can do it again and again and again. And I can feel it differently in my body, mm -hmm. depending on Absolutely. where my foot is. Or, or like the hundred, does the hundred ever get easier? <laughs> no, you get deeper. Not if you don't want it to. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And sort of like, like playing scales or like doing your, your, you know, in dance, how many plies you do before you can do a plie that can make somebody cry. It's so beautiful, right? Yes, So right. I can make you cry on my first plie, I'm sure it's gonna look that bad. <laughs> just, just say. <laughs> I'd love to see that then, go ahead, make me cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to see that today. Um, but that's, uh, that's exactly it. And, and Kara was talking about that yesterday in that those times when we are in a funk, she was saying, just keep moving. Yeah. You know, there's something to be said for, for just like, un, almost like unconsciously, just go back to movement and just find right. healing through that movement. Well, like there's a, there was a study about like smiling. And yes. Were saying like, even just smiling can, can change your mood. But like, mm -hmm. try to be depressed if you put your arms in the air and you smile at the sky. Like, it's really hard to feel depressed when you change yes. your body posture and body language too. Yes. Um, and it's hard to, it's hard to feel depressed if you're really breathing well. Yes. All those things, you know, because it changes your chemistry. It does. Yes, you know? absolutely. When yeah. I have the blues, I go right to the ladder barrel <laughs> so I can open, <laughs> get open. Yes, exactly. do my hand scores. Well, when John Claude uh, Nelson was on here, he was saying he just goes to the forest on the lunch hour. He goes out and 
and, and just goes for a walk and just goes in the forest and just breathes and all those different things. I very seldom would I do that as much as I love it. And he said it and I was like, yeah, that's such a great idea. Never really did it. But then when I had these four days when I, you know, I felt like I was like a leper that was just like quarantined off from the rest of the world while I was trying to figure out what's happening. Uh-huh. I did that I, every day. So of course by myself and just breathe and just sit there and just be still and no phone and just, you know what I mean? Like it was a sense of just that, that opening up and it was so um, refreshing for lack of a better word. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's sort of like I, I'm, I'm living by the ocean right now. And um, there's something about that. The, like the air is different in open spaces. The air is different. Yes. Like after it rains, the air is different around trees, the air is mm. different around oceans and lakes and things like that. And so, if you let it kind of, without even thinking it, just by breathing it, you're bringing all that in. Yes. All that energy in. It's kind of cool. Very cool. So you're, are you um, becoming now a forest man? I'm becoming a forest man, yes. Decided I'm going to close my studio and just walk barefoot through a uh, forest for a living. I think you probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how did it feel yesterday talk, when I had Kara, because I know you were, you were watching yesterday for a little bit with Kara on and us talking about peak and talking about just our learning. And when you sit back and just watch that, how did that feel for you just hearing people talk so fondly of that foundational learning that we both had like back in the day, so to speak? Um, well, you know, Kara did a lot of study with me. And mm-hmm. so I think she went through her... And she came to me, she, ha- she was breastfeeding, I remember that, because her mom would come, and then she would kind of excuse herself for a little while. And it makes me feel really proud. It makes me really feel really proud of like people like her and other people that have just continued to like, um, not just graduate and then go away, but they continue to be part of the learning. I mean, I've been up to Frederick, yes. into her studio, um, I love her clients and uh, Carol Isley, who's up there. They just have a wonderful mm-hmm. community. And they used to come down, and then they would continue to come down. And so, um, yeah, so we have this this longer-term relationship, and um, it's just nice to have that community and see this next generation start to really come into their own. And then she went back and got her degree in kinesiology. I'm not even sure if she's quite done that yet, but I'm super she proud of soon. her. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very cool. It's emerging. It's almost like a, a new generation of leaders emerging, in in many ways, right? Like, because it's not like someone who took did a teacher training, and then they're just that's just it. Like, she's still on, and like she has her own teacher training, and she's cultivating a community of other leaders. And so there's there's a generational, like in a true way, not in a cheesy way, but like a generation yeah. of of well, teaching she, that's happening, right? Well, she's put in the work. You know, she's yes, put in the yes. time. She's put in the hours working with people that could pass on like what we know. And mm. so, um, you know, and so you kind of, she's kind of earned her, 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 her position actually. Yes. You know, she didn't shortcut it in other words. Right, exactly. You know, Which is so, fascinating because I, I had not met her until maybe like a few months ago. I didn't even know that she existed or where I know, she was. It's such a gem. I, I feel like everybody in Canada should be neighbors, <laughs> but Canada's big. She, it's, it's so <laughs> massive. She's, I'm probably closer to Joel than I am to, <laughs> to yeah. it's like that far. Like it's, yeah. Well, she's right here in far. Nova Scotia, right? Because when right, I drove right. up there, it was kind of like, in you know, East Coast, yeah. Yeah, she's, mm-hmm. I think she's about eight hours away from Boston. Something like that. She said, I think she said it was more like five. Okay. Yeah. So when I drove up, it, it took about five, but it's so great because it's this wide open highway. So you can really, you know, you can really cruise. Yes. Right. Very and their speed limits are higher and stuff like that. So that's neat. Mm-hmm. Let's see this comment here. Healing through movement for the Plies world means that his work was based on respiratory system, circulatory system, and lymphatic system working together. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, that is the, um, yeah, that's the base systemic um, understanding of it. And I love just broadening that conversation because there's so much more of a, and this is Karen and I were talking about this yesterday too. 
10 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't really understand so much of emotional health and emotional wellness and all these different things. We just knew that, you know, if you went for a walk and you went and played that you'd be less inclined to stab your coworker. Like it just, that was just a sense of just being calm. Now there's labels and then there's this trend with saying you have a therapist and you have counselors and you have EAP programs and you have all these different things. So we understand the healing moves and we have data to, to back that up from an emotional standpoint, as well as like we are saying, there's circulatory system, lymph and respiratory and all those different things. So yeah, yeah, it's true on so many more levels now. Well, yeah, I agree. And I, I, was, uh, I went to Northeastern in the 80s and I was in the phys ed department. And um, that was like in the beginning of the wellness movement. They called it wellness back then. It was like an yes. emerging word. And um, I had some amazing professors and they're the ones that really first started to turn me on to what I already knew because I come from, I was a lacrosse, a lacrosse player in school and did a lot of sports and was a competitive swimmer and diver and everything like that. So mm-hmm. I can remember distinctly, like when I was in high school and we get out at whatever, 2.50, by three o'clock we had to be out on the field and then yes. you're running your laps, right? In preparation for the, for the practice. And I can remember like, making a, a distinction between like really letting go of my day at, in that in that moment and mm-hmm. the term that they used you know subsequently um in, in at northeastern was they called it recreation like to recreate yourself that yes. recreation was what the thing was and well um said, yes you know and then fast forward um I, so i take play very seriously actually because <laughs> i know how that works in the body but in addition to that, I can remember, um, even in my Pilates training, fast forward after all those years, and um, Romano would say that, 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 that Joe would say, you know, Pilates is good for the body, but it's not just for the muscles. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just a physical thing, because um, he had studied like some of the acupuncture and, and this and that, and so it was good for the circ- circulatory limbic you know, all the pressure points along the spine, all that rolling that we do on our spine. Yes. I mean, just think of how you feel when you do the short box and you, you go all the way upside down and then you curl all the way up. You feel like, it, yes. like you've had a drug by the time the short box is over. If, you, if you've done it well, it's like, whoa. Yes. That's like, that's like a whole a whole thing, you know, the ringing out of the lungs, the, mm. um, you know, all of those things like stomach massage series to massage your organs. Right. You know, the whole idea of the internal shower. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I was like so fascinated by that because I think we can get so much about just our muscles all the time. Right. Exactly. And- you just painted such an amazing word picture there with all of that. I feel like I need to just like <laughs> jump on these machines behind me. <laughs> I'm like, and cut. <laughs> well, I actually had a great workout this morning. I was like, I got to take my reformer for a full on ride. And so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. I don't, for those of you watching, like, wasn't that just the, like the best word picture of like doing your short box? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, the body so great. Yeah. And then if you do it on the ladder barrel and then you get on, you do the handstand and you go do the back walkover and oh, it's just like, it's like all of that in heaven too. Yep. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Such a good thing. Getting like a million hearts flying through on the <laughs> chat. Yeah, I know, right? Because everybody knows, like, if, if you get that, ever get that feeling once, it's what gets people hooked, right? Yes. It's that's when they go, like, there's something really important here. I just took the biggest breath of my life, or I just mm-hmm. you fill in the blanks. I mean, in my opinion, if you don't get your bell rung <laughs> once, <laughs> once a workout, um, that's. You know, either with your teacher or by yourself. If something doesn't just knock your socks off, um, go back and try again. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. You know. Oh, I love that. That is so good. That is so refreshing. I hope all of you that are watching this have this renewed sense of, like, I need to get back to the mat right now after hearing Claire talk like this about it. Because, yes. Um, yeah, survival That's... instincts kick in backwards. Walkover is so important. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I try to get everybody to get it back into their handstands. You know, it's funny because the older we get, the less we start, we keep doing them, you know? Yes. And so, um, you know, Jake Grimes said to me, how can you stop doing your back bends? Because I had taken a little hiatus. I was getting old. He says, don't stop because then you're never going to be able to, you know, once you stop, it's so much harder to get back into it. Yes. So, or yes. your high bridges. It was like, I, I wasn't doing my high bridges anymore. I was like, I got to get back to my high bridges. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a workshop at Momentum Fest on, um, on push-ups for that oh, same reason, right? Like that's, um, and what's your thoughts, just out of curiosity, not that I'm, I'm stealing content from you, but what's your thoughts on, on push-ups and, and having that as part of your work? I love it. I, I get push-ups in every, every mat class I teach. I don't care how old or young. They're learning how to push from their powerhouse. They're learning how to get, you know what I love about the push-ups the way, anyway, the way we do them in Pilates, because I mean, in fitness, we would do with hands here, hands here, hands here, yes. all over the place, you know what I mean? Feet <laughs> right. up, hands up, whatever. But like, we were talking, you know, it really comes in tight, right? Yes, yes. That's the beginning of lifting up for your swan on the mat, too. It's the yes. beginning of the, you know, the rowing series. You know, mm -hmm. some people, they don't, they never get that position, right? Yes. And so, um, I love push-ups because I think that's, that understanding and how to hold everything together as you're, whether you're on your knees, whether you're on your feet, whether you have one leg in the air, it's all, it's all that same wonderful thing. Yes. And it hits everything. Yeah, it does. So, it does. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of push-ups. I wish, I mean, yes. you probably look great doing push-ups. I look okay doing push-ups. <laughs> My wife reminds people whenever she's teaching that they're called push-ups, not fall downs. So <laughs> oh, yeah. find your spot that you can still push up from and let's work our way down from there, right? So there's so many, yes, push-ups every class. There's so many different fundamentals and there's so many spots within the work that is setting us up for that exercise, but we never really draw the connections because we're inclined to just skip it because they don't look good or we don't look good doing them. Or maybe as yeah. a teacher, you're not great at demonstrating yourself. And if you're not clean, why would you, there's so many different rationales, why? So. Yeah, I, I just feel like though, if, if, if people are understanding what this position is, if you think about like um, just even like I said, just like the, the rowing series from the chest is like the beginning yes. of your push-up. So if you're executing that well, you're setting yourself up to be able to, you know, hold your weight like that. Um, yes. Yeah, and I, and I think it just, um, and it's like one of my, actually, I'm glad you brought up this push-up thing. It's one of my pet peeves to not let people cut the corners on some of those movements that, you know, where you're more upright hitting those positions instead of yes. just like fluffing over them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things I fuss about, knowing that I want to get them to a push up. Well, I was going to say maybe it's because we're not taking them on the journey towards a push up, right? Because, like, you know, there's many times that you're teaching someone because you're trying to set them up for some gold star exercise down the road. So if we're not thinking of the push up as our end goal, then I wouldn't f worry about a lat engagement or a proper glute engagement or a strong plank before we make it a dynamic plank, which is all a push-up is, is right. a dynamic moving plank in many ways, right? So if we're not setting up for somewhere else in the work, then obviously it's going to, it's going to fall by Kara. the wayside, right? Yes. Hey, Kara. Hi, Kara. We were just talking about you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's the same thing like with the short box with the arms up holding the pole. Like yes, how that relates to a handstand. Mm hmm. Right. So I mean, yeah. So if you're not thinking about where you're going with something to get to, I like that a gold star. Miss you too, Kara. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Yeah. To get us to that gold star, or like yes. even the the, the the back bends. Right. Yes. All of and, and I use the word gold star very loosely too, because I mean I have clients that the gold star is just simply an exercise that they didn't think that they could do. I'm not saying like they have to do like, you know, the super mega advanced plies exercise, just something that's outside of their scope of what they think they are possible of. If I was to give a definition of gold star by my definition, you know what I mean? So um, huh. that's just the way I was thinking about it. It's like, how do I get my clients to that thing that they didn't think they could do? Yeah. It's just out of their reach. Yeah. I, just, I don't call I call it something like, um, 
it's going to be, a, um, that's the exercise that lets us know that you've made progress or something like that. Yes. I forget yeah. the word that I use. It comes out different every time I say it, but, um, <laughs> you know, that's our test exercise or, you know, this is, this is going to be your Olympic event. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Or I just call them the grand finale. And they're like, oh, why is the grand finale last when I'm tired? And I'm like, well, because we have to set up for it. Have... So this is like the, this is the argument I have with my client. <laughs> why are you giving me the hardest exercise last? Like, because if I gave it to you first, you'd fail miserably. So. Well, because I know better than you. How's that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just <laughs> say works. like, listen, I say, just obey me and we'll get along fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> too funny oh, my God. oh clara thank you for joining me this is like it's been so fun i think it's such an honor to just be able to just like hang out and chat like this online this is so oh, it's cool. so great i've been so enjoying i've been plugging in and then i've had unfortunately i have a like a client that comes in he's 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 away right now so i can only watch for a little while on thursdays but um yeah so it's it's been really fun i always like meeting your guests and yes. um listening to your thoughts on life itself <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much all right uh, you know i guess actually you'll have to sign off here and i'll just say my final goodbyes and we have a different non pilates person tomorrow too so um neil prasad is joining us and um we're going to talk marketing and just different things <laughs> that's what we're cool. going to talk about yeah cool 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 that's good i'm i'm sort of a working in my marketing brain right now with a mental mm. program and stuff. And it's like you, you brainstorm a list, but you really got to chunk it down to what, like, I'm going to do three things today. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do my whole, I got I to gotta just do boom, boom, boom. Right. Yeah. Well, as I was, he's like, oh, I want to give some good content to everyone tomorrow. I was like, you can just talk about who you are. And that's, that's, that's great content, but I was asking him, like, you know, what are some mistakes that people make or what are three um, overarching principles for anywhere in the service industry to be successful or like, I'm just throwing stuff at him just on a, like a broad stroke because he works with marketing agencies. He works with big corporations. So um, I just, I just want to pick his brain tomorrow and just hear what he says for someone like you or I that are, you know, are like multi-million dollar corporations, but still right. need the same, you know, touch points with people right so yeah 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 so be fun that is fun that sounds really really great so yes. who was, were you supposed to have a guest today uh nope actually it's a i call these a freestyle so whenever i have no guests scheduled whether on purpose or not um i just come on here and just chat with whoever wants to join me so uh -huh. today was you well, that's really fun. And uh, you know, who coined the phrase? I think it was Power Pilates that coined the phrase, like Susan Moran and, and, and Bob Leakins. I think they're the ones that came up with the change and Howard. Change happens through movement and movement heals. Um, I think that was the whole particular phrase. And okay. uh, it, I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's terrific. And I always like, um, like we were talking about, like adding to that, the whole idea that it's not, it's not repeating something poorly that really uh, makes positive change. And it's, it's like, if you can get one rep and then it's one rep well done, then yes. you can build on it and build on it and build on it. Absolutely. You've got to figure a way to get at least that pathway started. Yes. Yeah. Because without, if you get, if you can't get that pathway started, you can't repeat it, right? Right. So, yeah. um, yeah interesting yes. yes all good stuff all right well thank you for joining me i see emma just joining us hello my friend um thank you for joining me today thank you for making our freestyle real fun um, that was great i'm glad i was just on a lark i just thought okay i'm gonna i have a choice i can listen to the news which is really bumming me out or i can <laughs> yes. pop on instagram <laughs> yes there you go. It's to totally worth your while. I'm so glad you chose us. <laughs> Super fun. Yes. All right. I'm going to sign you off here. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. And we'll see you tomorrow. We've got Neil Prasad joining us from the Biz Dev Wiz. This is his handle. So Business Development Wizard. Awesome. All right. See you, Claire. See ya. Have Thanks. a great Bye, day. Bye, everybody. Yes. Bye.